what was the famous Jacques Cousteau quote? Once the sea holds you in its grasp, that's it. You can't, you can't let go. There's just this draw that pulls you back all the time. I mean, that's keeps you going no matter what, no matter what happens. You're always after this something that's out there, like no, and you're never really fully content and satisfied to where you'll step away from the ocean. It's, when it's in you, it's in you, and that's it. It's in your blood, and you're you're going to be going there till basically the end of your days. You never know what's going to happen, what's around the next corner, what the conditions are going to be like, what the fishing's going to be like. Beyond even the diving itself is just getting there half the time and experiencing a new place on land and then, you know, not knowing what to expect when you go offshore and what you're going to see in the water. And it's amazing. It's a, a very refreshing experience. circle of going out, immersing yourself in the ocean, and pursuing something that is going to basically provide food for yourself and other people, it's a pretty amazing experience. You become very connected to the whole process. I think it's something that in basically embedded in our cores, whether we tap into that or not, you know, is up to us drives me and I think a lot of people that pursue the sport, I think that's what keeps them going. Your whole time frame bubble turns into two minutes. Two minutes on the surface, two minutes on the bottom. And nothing else, that's it. All sense of time basically goes out the window, excluding looking at your dive watch while you're on the surface breathing up and looking at your dive watch while you're down on the bottom hunting fish. When you first experience a proper Kubera hunt, a bit nerve wracking, you know, you're diving deep sticking yourself in these tiny little holes where you can't basically see anything because they're dark. You never know what the heck's going to be in the thing. 
next thing you know, you're face to face with this big mouth full of teeth and this big gnarly apex predator reef fish that you know is knows that if you shoot him, he's gonna wreck all your gear and, and take you for a ride. You become so infatuated with hunting those fish and trying to put one on the boat that all that fear and all that that hesitation from you know going into these places where normally your your instinct would be don't go there is just pushed to the wayside because all you're focused on is is trying to put a shaft in one of those things. Do you want me to give you the synopsis? Uh, day one. Yes, sir. One, uh, big moon. Um, day one, Blue Water World Cup in Baja with like one minute from start here. So, oh, 10 seconds. And then we're out of here. Try to win this thing. See you later. I got started working with Dennis Hostler. Uh, he's from a company, 20 Fathoms. He started the tournament and uh, brought it to Mexico. It's called the La Paz Blue Water Cup. I got involved because uh, I was running my business here and I provided a platform for what he wanted to do, which was showcase blue water spearfishing with the best spearfishermen in the world coming to have what he dreamed of was the Bisbee of spearfishing. Nobody had a tournament in blue water that had prize money, that had the major spearfishing companies behind it. And now we're in our 11th year running the World Cup here and it's taken off. It was exciting, it was fun, it was stressful. Everyone was like on the boats, quarter to seven, wetsuits on, ready to go. We're doing an international level event in a really tiny little goofy town. I like to think that we're doing something that's locally world famous. The money stays at the primary school, it's win-win all the way around. Overall, it was an amazing, awesome event. A ton of really good fish came in, great crew of competitors, and I'm stoked. So I'm, I'm really happy to place where I did, and it was great, it was an amazing event. You know, people that don't understand the sport and what goes into it, and you know, they kind of, take on this barbaric view of what we do, which is, oh, we, we go out there and we take these spear guns and we're just killing everything, which is not the case at all. I mean, it's probably the most sustainable, you know, form of fishing on this planet. It's important for people to be able to get in touch with nature and experience something that, you know, in this day and age, I think uh, is becoming more distant for people.